Well, everybody's all chipper and seems like you're ready to have church this morning. We are. You act like you're glad to be here. So, would you rather be here, the best prison in the world, or here, the best hospital in the world? Here working, or here or working 12 hours a day at work. I don't think about to be here. But God's good in. I'm glad we have this opportunity. This country's got its flaws, but I'll tell you what, it's still the best country in the world. Thank God for it that we can come together and, and still worship God and have a good time. And not have to keep watch out the windows for anybody. We're blessed people. But let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer before we even start the service this morning. God, we thank you for the beautiful day. We thank you for the ones that showed up this morning. Uh, be with the ones that couldn't, Lord. Uh, you know who they are. Uh, we just ask that you bless uh, the service this morning to sing and uh, be with Greg as he's on his way, Lord. Keep him safe. Uh, bless every testimony, every message, every aspect, God. And the Lord will give you the praise for everything. Amen. Yeah, Greg's running a little late today. He called me last night. He's all excited. Of course, uh, he, went, uh, he wanted his mom to come to church with him. So he's like, pray for me. Sometimes he was worried last week about her. Uh, not answering the phone. Sometimes she has a hard time hearing the phone or comprehending some things sometimes. So he's like, I'm going to go get her, and if she happens to forget her or be a little late, I might be running a little late. So I guess they was, uh, Jill was telling me that she was still in bed when she got there. So he's getting her, getting her ready. So he's excited to get her here and said she wanted to be here. So I said, well, we'll start church. When you get here, we'll continue to have church.
help me to do better today than I did yesterday. And that's what I see here when it says, Thou art the potter, and I'm the, I am the clay. Here I am, Lord. Help me to be a better light, a better witness, a better example of who you are to everyone that I come in contact with. I hope that's everyone's prayer.
So I happened to have a Santa suit. And I said, Greg, would you be willing? He said, I would love to. I used to do that all the time. And I said, there's one stipulation when you walk in that house. Don't cry in front of me. <laughs> and he done real good. He reached out there to give uh, this little guy a hug. And that guy, he grabbed Greg's hand and just kissed his hand. Well, it was all over after that. <laughs> I warned him. I tried to him ahead of time. <laughs> but I appreciate a soft heart. We have a neighbor, I say we, the lane moved away and left us, but uh, <laughs> and, uh, I can see why she left the yard that she had to mow. But one day this guy comes over and he just started mowing a half of it. And it was just off one week, every week he mowed a half of it. And he's just a great guy. And uh, the other day, he, the other night, he went to the hospital to have a stent put in. And it didn't go that well. He ended up with double bypass, and he's not doing well. But we did get word last night that he's better. So his name was Rick Gibbons, and we would like to have prayer for him. Any others? I read the three men were all where I say,
doing a college and, um, you know, we bring Vivian to church every chance we get, but she doesn't get it anywhere else but here, so we need her parents to get involved. We need them to take this baby to church. Anyone else? Any else put up with the hands? Let's all stand for her. Brother Walker? I surrender all. Thank you. 
my mom's a man. Uh, you know what? She really instilled us. She was left with a kid at the age of 36. And my mom would never date anything because she said, who would take eight kids about this trip? <laughs> so, but she really ruled uh, our fist with us. And uh, I had two brothers who been into the service, but when you walk in with your mom, I just, it's such a blessing to have good mothers. Yes. And I'm so sorry that I wasn't the kind of mother that my mother was. <laughs> And uh, maybe now I can be as an older in life and got in the right way. So I just think it was wonderful to see your mom. Oh, so <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
perfect pieces on the page before. <laughs>
you're wobbly when you get old. <laughs> good to be here this morning. I've been looking forward to this morning ever since Mom said she could come with me. And I called Brother Phil early and I texted Michelle and said, you all just, if we don't make it on time, you just start with Alice, we'll, we'll be there. And all the way up the road I heard, I'm so sorry. You shouldn't have waited for me. <laughs> it was worth well, I wouldn't try to this for more <laughs> <laughs> I One of these days, children, there's going to be a reunion in heaven. <laughs> and I'm glad I'm be a part of it. <laughs> Those two songs that we saw this morning, He's my king, yeah. and oh, I dearly love him. He is. Yeah, yeah. He's the Alpha Omega beginning and the end. But he's so much my king, my father. Then we sung the song, I'm Nearer Home. You realize today, church, that song's for every one of us. Yeah. No matter how young, no matter how old, that song is for each and every one of us. This morning I, I have studied this scripture so many times, preached on it many times. Didn't know exactly where I was going this morning, but it all leads back to this. You realize today, I just want to ask the church, you realize today that when you don't serve God, or you're disobedient to God, God lets things happen. You believe that? He does. I'm going to prove it. I'm going to prove it this morning. Back in 1 Kings, starting in the 17th chapter, I'm going to read first verse four. It says, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was in the habits of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, behold, before whom I stand, there shall not be no dew nor rain these years according to my word. So, right off the bat, Elijah, he looked at Ahab and he said, you know, for all the sin, all the disappointment, all the times you rejected God, all the times that you looked ahead of God and, and said there was no God and that, that you was the king and you was going to do all these things, because of all this here, God has looked it down upon you. And God has said, there is not going to be no water. Now, if we didn't have water here today for a few days, we would insist. We would make it through. But the Bible says in the 18th chapter, in the first verse, it says, And it came to pass after many of the days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year. Third year, three years, no rain, no water. Today, sir, I believe at that very point, water probably was getting pretty barren. I imagine even the deepest of holes was probably getting pretty shallow. Yeah. But God let this happen for three years to prove a point, to show that, that he is still God, that he is still supreme, that he is still on the throne. And no matter what king wanted to go against him, he still showed him that he was God. And the Bible says here, he said, he told him, he said, go, show thyself unto Ahab, and I will soon send rain upon the earth. So I, there's a lot of verses here, so I'm going to jump around this morning, so I just want to let you all know. But I'm going to go down to the seventh verse. And it says here in the seventh verse, that the, there was a story about Obadiah. Obadiah today, children, was one that when Jezebel was out to kill all of them that 
Obadiah went out and, and he hid these prophets up in the cave so that they, they, they would be secure. And the Bible says here so further, it says, And as Obadiah was in the way, behold, Elijah met him, and he knew him. And he fell on his face and said, Art thou thy my Lord Elijah? And he answered, I am. Go tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here. And he said, Why have I sinned? And thou wouldst deliver thy servant unto the hand of Ahab to slay me. And so Ahab's look, I mean, Obadiah is looking at him and he's saying, Now, Elijah, you're wanting me to go back to Ahab. And you know, we've already had this discussion of many times that he's been out looking for you all over the place and he can't find you. But you know what today, children, when you get to a point, you get to a pinch, and things ain't going the way that you want them to go, you start looking for another answer. Yeah. Every one of us sitting here today, no matter what you have went through, there are times in your life that you went and you looked for another answer because the way things was going wasn't working out. Yeah. And this is the way it was with Ahab. Ahab sent a, 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 a diet, and he told him, now you go over this part of the land, and I'm going to go on this part of the land, and we're going to try to find water. Three years, church. Three years, no water. So he sent them out. He said, you know, because if we don't find water, all of my animals, all of my them that we have are going to die. Wasn't thinking about the people. He was thinking about his goods. He was thinking about what he had and what he was going to lose. He wasn't concerned about those folks that they joined that worship him. He wasn't worried about the ones that was out. He was concerned what he was going to lose. How many days to children, how many times in this life do we know people that they join, they are concerned about what they're going to lose yeah. instead of concerned about everyone else. Amen. Mm -hmm. So Elijah, Obadiah went and he found him. And he goes down to scripture here and I want to go down to verse 16. It says here, it says, So Obadiah went and he met Ahab and he told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. And it came to pass when Elijah, uh, Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab looked, said unto him, Art thou he that troubled Israel? See, everybody else is calling. You know, you're, you're the one that calls, even though I haven't served God, even though I have called the evil against my people, you are the problem because you serve God. Yeah. That's what he told him. He told Elijah, he looked at him, Aren't you the one that has troubled us? No. He ain't the one that troubled you. God looked you face to face and said, you know what? This is what it's going to be like. You don't want to serve me? This is what you're going to go through. Church, God will let things happen. Amen. Will I say God will cause things to come upon you? No, I'm not going to say that. But I will say God will pull his hand back and let these things come upon you. Yes. The Bible says here, and Elijah came unto the people and said, how long are you between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if failed, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Then Elijah said unto the people, I, even I, only remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450. One to 450. Pretty good odds for them. Wouldn't you think that today, children? If you was, you was in a ball game, and you only had your one self, and there was 450, what's the chance of you winning? So the odds, they you, you know, he put them out there in the open and he let them know, so you know, this is the odds, you got 450, I got one. Yeah. Yeah, totally. But the Bible says here, and he said, let them four of them give two bullets and let them choose the one. He said, you choose the ball if you want. You go out there through your all that you have, you choose that prime one that you have, and you set him up for an honor. Now I'm going to use Greg's words here because of many in scripture. And he looked at him and he said, now he told all of me, he said, now you all get this together. And you pray to your veil. You pray to your God. And have him answer you. And the Bible says here, it goes on down in the scripture. And it says here today, they, they made their altar. They took this prime veil, veil up that they found. You know, and they, and, they, and, they, and they cut him up and they put him on the altar. And they made everything just so nice for their God. So they started praying to their God. And they started praying to their God. And the Bible says they continued to pray to their God. And they said,
said the Bible says that they started gnashing themselves, started cutting themselves because their God was not answering them. And the Bible says Elijah spoke up. And, and he says here, and he came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry out loud, for he is God. Either he is talking, or he is pursuing, or he is on a journey, or for adventure, he's sleeping. And he wake up not. And they cried aloud, and they cut themselves, and the man with knives and lances, and filled with blood, gushed up on them. And it came to pass at midday, when passed. And they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that was neither a voice, nor any answer, nor any regard. For hours and hours and hours, this 450, I can, I can just imagine, this 450 standing out there and they're crying until this make believe God that they have been told to, to worship. Today, church, think about this. We live in these times. We live in these times right now where there are people out there and they are they are serving other gods. Yes. Amen. They are. It might not be one that walks around, but they are serving other gods. Anything that you put before your church, before you put before your God, if you're serving that God. Yeah. And the Bible says here, it said, Elijah said unto the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar, the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones, according to the number of the tribes of the son of Jacob, and to whom the word of the Lord came by saying, Israel shall be thy name. And when the stones he built with the altar, in the name of the Lord he made a, tr he made a trench around the altar, as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in the order, and he cut the bullock up in pieces, and he laid it on the wood, and said, fill four barrels with water and poured upon the burnt offering and upon the wood. So Elijah said, here guys, this is what I'm going to do. I want you to take this trench that I have dug around my altar, and I want you to fill it with water. Amen. And I want you to fill it four times, four barrels. Then I want you to go back a second time and put four barrels and put it around the altar one more time. Then I want you to go back a third time, four barrels of water, and put it all over my sacrifice. Now, church, you think about this. Every one of us are grown people, and every one of us has had campfires. If that wood's wet, what happens? It don't burn. It don't burn. But fire came down from heaven. I'm going to talk about this story here. It says here, and, and, and the water ran about the altar, and he filled the trench also with water. And it came to pass at the time of the altar of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God. In Israel. Yeah. And that I am the servant, and that I am done all these things as thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know, and that they have turned their hearts again, back again. And the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering and sacrificed in the wood. And the stones and the dust and licked up all the water that was in the trench. And when the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, Lord, he is God. Lord, he is God. Do you remember in your life when the fire fell? Do you remember, church, when, when he came down on fire in your heart and you got beside yourself because he said, No longer are you going to serve the Lord, the world. Today you're going to serve me. Aren't you glad today, church, that you can make a difference in your life when you come to God and say, Lord, I am a sinner. I have made mistakes. I have failed. But I'm asking you today for your forgiveness. And he stands up there with open arms and he says, My child, come home. The Bible says here, John, that the fire fell. I tell you what, I got thinking about that. You know, I, I preach all the time. I always 
say, you know what? You don't feel what I feel in my heart. Your wood's wet. And I'm a firm believer in that. Today, children, if you don't get excited about the Lord, you need to find out why you don't get excited. If this don't stir you, you need to find out why it don't stir you. If this don't make you start thinking, then you know what? There's a better way. I would be concerned about that. But the Bible says here, turn that Elijah. <coughs> Three years it has to rain. Think about this. But yet he was able to come up with 12 barrels of water to put on his altar. Yeah. God's God. Yes, nothing impossible for my Lord. Amen. I don't care what the church said. I don't care what anybody says. There's nothing impossible with my God. Amen. He does all things. Nothing impossible with him. The Bible says here that, you got to think about this, three years, they went without rain. Three years, they've been everywhere, family. Brother Jim, I do remember that three years, they've probably seen a lot of things die. You think about it, you know, you've you got your green grass for the, the cows, camels, whatever they have, the asses. The next thing you know, that's all gone. So, you know, only in a period of time, you know, the, the, the body itself can live longer without water than when it can without food. But you look at this here, children, three years. Three years, no rain. I imagine today, children, Ahab's prophets, they probably had it out there trying in every, every trick in the book, everything. You know, I'm sure the king had them doing everything they could do to try to cause water to happen. But God said no. God said no. Today, children, church, I'm going to tell you, there was times in your life, my life, that God will say no. There's a path that he wants you to take, and that's a straight and narrow path. Yes, it is. And anytime you try to go around that, only thing you're going is against God. The Bible says here, John, that the fire fell. It consumed all the offering, all the bull, all the wood. And it took that for them to realize there was more to this God than what was taught to them. Today, church, God does not get taught in a lot of churches. That is why it, I, I say this so many times, and, 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 and you know what, i got to say it every Sunday to finally make sense to everybody, including Greg, that I will continue to say this. Thursday night, when they have the youth service back in the back, that is so important. It is so important for the little babes to be taught there is a God. And today, children, if your children don't come here, they need to come here. They need to know there's a God. They need to be taught about this God that can change their life. They need to know about this God that they can call upon when the world gives them up. Because today, children, everyone who's sitting here knows You've raised children. There are times in their life, a young adult, I'm getting a little bit older, maybe 13, 14. There's times they don't want to talk to mom and dad. They're going through something in their life. And they're trying to find an answer. But they don't know where to turn. Amen. But if they're taught as a babe, then they know that they can call upon God. Amen. And he hears that word. Amen. And he hears that need of a child. As much as an adult today, Joe, he hears that need. And in our life as an adult, it might not be very important to us. But to that child, it was everything. Thursday nights, church, I'm going to tell you, we always have prayer at the beginning. And I always ask, is there any prayer requests? 
There are, I can't tell you how many, every, about every week, I got at least one young child raise her hand for a prayer request. May it be a papal that they're praying for. May it be a dad or a mom. May it be a sister or a brother. Or even just a friend. And they will request that prayer. Church, God hears that prayer. Yes, yes. Amen. God heard Elijah. When everybody else gave up, Elijah stood back. The Bible said that he was just the one prophet. But when everybody else was given up, he stood fast for what he believed. Amen. Church, we got to stay fast for what we believe. You look around our nation the way things are falling apart. We might be the only God we're going to hear. And today, church, we need to proclaim it. And we need to know, know there is a God that can bring them out of them. And this whole world, you know, the United States, God can bring them out of them. God can make the United States as great as it ever was. But just like Baal, God said, you know, it's time for you guys to understand there is a God. Chronicles, five book of Chronicles says, humble thyself and call upon the Lord. Today, church, is what we have to do. We have a loving God that loves us. We got a Satan God that is in business. Where you stand this morning. You go on down to the scripture, three years, no rain. And I'll finish this out. It says here, and Elijah said unto Ahab, get thee up and eat and drink, for there's south of the throne. So Ahab went up and he drank. And Elijah went to the top of Carmel, and they cast themselves down on the earth and put their face between their knees, and said to his servant, Go upon and look upon the sea. And he went up and he looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. And it came to pass on the seventh time that he said, Behold, there arises a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, Go and say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariots and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. Today, children, there was the faith and believing. So, you know, first time he went there, hey, Elijah, there's nothing out there. Came back to Elijah and said, Go again. Went back and come back and said, Elijah, there's nothing out there. Today, show God will try your faith. God will put you through tests. He will make you try over and over and over sometimes. Because today, John, he wants to see if you're persistent. He wants to see if you're willing. The Bible says on the seventh time that that young man come back. And he said, there's a little cloud out there. And it's about the size of a man's hand. And Elijah spoke up and said, go tell Ahab that the rain is coming. Today, sir, I am so glad to know that I serve a God that's able to do when everyone else gives up. When everybody else decides there's no more, there's no way out, God says, just stand to the side and let me be God. This morning, child, that's what God does. I am so glad this morning that I serve a God, a risen Savior <coughs> that's on the throne. I'm so glad I serve a God today, children, that when old Greg, Brother Roger, when old Greg just don't know what's going on, he said, just, just let me take care of it. Let me take care of it. Brother Jerry mentioned about not. And Brother Jerry, we've talked about this at any time. I said, you know what? God will be God, and God's going to get through this. And we know that this morning. If we continue to believe, if we trust the Lord in that church, there's nothing impossible with my God. Amen. As mom came up the road today, and I use my mom a whole lot, but shall I tell you what, church, she's my most living testimony that I ever go with. 
She is what Greg is where he's at today. Yes, God saved me. Yes, God has called me to preach, but that's the reason why. That warrior on her knees praying for her son. Sure, you can ask my mom. She'll tell you I fell over a million times. I was a kid. But I'm so glad that they chose that God gave me one more chance. And God says, you know what? I can use you for my kingdom. I have a job for you to do. Everybody who's sitting here this morning, John, God has gave you an opportunity. You're here in God's house. If you're sitting back there and you think, well, there's just nothing I can do. Church, I don't care if you just pick up a piece of paper off the floor and you see it there. You're doing that for God. I thought about Sister D's husband. And I know I'm going to pick him out here in a minute. And yeah, I'm a lawyer. Jill says that. You know, he came over here and he brought his tractor. And he piled the snow here the other day. Do you think God won't see that? I'm sure my God up in heaven just smiled. Say, that's my mind. He's getting things ready so we can have church. <coughs> morning children God's good he's a loving God there's nothing that you can do today children there's nothing that you've been through there's nothing that no, no way that you've went that God can't use you if you feel that this morning the Bible says that the devil's a liar and I'll let you know that's the same way the devil is a liar if you're sitting there and think there's nothing I can do for God then the devil has you fooled because this morning, children, there is a great work to be done. There are souls that need to be saved. There is family out there that, and, and, and me and Mom talked about this on the way up here today. There is such a big congregation out in this world today that is seeking for an answer. We know the answer. We just need to share it. We need to share it to everyone that we speak to. Every opportunity that we have, every young person that's sitting here today, Jordan, God has a job for you to do. The Bible says on Jeremiah that before he was even born, God knew him. Amen. The Bible says on well, when old John the Baptist today, Jordan was in the womb, we talked about this Thursday night, that he leaped from the Holy Ghost. Children, there's a job to be done. Yes, I preach all the time about us being in a war, in a battle. I'm just glad to know today, children, that I read this. And I know who comes up victorious. Isn't that good to know? Yes, through everything that you're going through, all the problems, and every time you turn around, think, man, there's just no way out. He says, there's a way. You follow me. There's a way. To that children as we stand. And the Savior's come. Please.
trying to do anything else. But he knew it was his job as a prophet, as a child of God. Today, children, that's our job. Every one of us standing here, it's our job to try to get that next one in, to help that next one through. We don't know what our neighbors are going through. We don't know the struggles that they, they go through. God does. And if God's put you with them on your heart, there's a reason why God put them there. There's maybe a reason that you, maybe you just need to speak to them. And they don't know there's a God that can help you through all the issues that you're going through. Elijah didn't have to. But Elijah was willing. He said, God, I'll be obedient. You lead me. I'll do your will. Church, that's what we need to be at. We need to stand up and say, God, I'm willing. No matter what you want me to do, I'm willing. Church, we want to see the church grow. We want to see our family saved. We want to see our loved ones get in. Just stand up and say, Lord, I'm willing. Whatever you need me to do, I'm willing. As they sing one last words, church is all the